You know, it's weird. I swear I didn't plan this. You know how right before the commercial break, I said things are going to start going very fast now. So in the commercial, <laughs> uh, we just got new news from the Washington Post. And I can't say that we didn't see this coming. I, even as I was warning you that things might go fast right now, I didn't think things would go quite this fast. I have been telling people in my personal life that I thought we would start to see news like this um, by the end of the summer. Uh, but we're seeing it now. All right, can we put up the can we put up this story that's just broken in the Washington Post? Were we able to make a full screen out of it? Yeah. Okay. Trump's lawyers seek to undercut Mueller's Russia investigation. Um, I'm just going to read you the lead. Again, this has just been posted by the Washington Post. Some of President Trump's lawyers are exploring ways to limit or undercut special counsel Bob Mueller's Russia investigation, building a case against what they allege are his, meaning Mueller's, conflicts of interest, and. Here's the part that I thought we wouldn't get to till at least the end of the summer. And, quote, discussing the president's authority to grant pardons, according to people familiar with the effort. Quoting again from the Times, uh, excuse me, from the Washington Post, Trump has asked his advisors about his power to pardon aides, family members, and even himself in connection with the probe, according to one of those people he asked. A second person said Trump's lawyers have been discussing the president's pardoning powers among themselves. Um, uh, this is a byline tonight, just moments ago from the Washington Post by Carol Lennig, Ashley Parker, Rosalind Helderman, and Tom Hamburger. So heavy hitters at the Washington Post reporting this out. Uh, they say without a quote, um, but citing advisors that, quote, the president is irritated by the notion that Bob Mueller's probe could reach into his and his family's finances. Trump has been fuming about the probe in recent weeks as he has been informed about the legal questions that he and his family could face. His primary frustration centers on why allegations that his campaign coordinated with Russia should spread into scrutinizing many years of Trump deal making. He has told aides he was especially disturbed after learning that Bob Mueller would be able to access several years of his tax returns. Uh, again, this just out moments ago from the Washington Post. Uh, joining us now is one of the reporters who has just broken this story, Ashley Parker. Oh, excuse me. We're getting Ashley Parker on the phone right now. It's going to be a little tease ahead there. Uh, the, um, in terms of the Post's reporting here, obviously their headline is about trying to attack Mueller's investigation going after Mueller's conflicts of interest. The thing that jumps off the page to you is that the president is already looking at what his pardon power is. I should tell you, there's one other nugget here. We've been reporting uh, in recent days on some of the difficulties, some of the apparent shakiness on the president's legal team here, both involving some of the individual lawyers seeming a little shaky uh, and the way they've been handling information about this probe and the way they put stuff out to the, to, to the public. Um, the Post is reporting tonight that the spokesman for the legal team representing the president Spokesman Mark Corallo tonight has resigned that post. Um, now, joining us by phone is one of the reporters who's just broke this story in the Washington Post, Ashley Parker. Ms. Parker, thank you very much for being with us uh, on short notice. I know that you're just breaking this story. I appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks for having me. So let me ask you first about the pardon discussions that you guys are reporting now. Um, you say Trump has asked his advisors about his power to pardon aides, family members, and even himself. Uh, you cite a second person saying that Trump's lawyers are discussing the president's pardoning powers among themselves. Are you reporting that the president is, has made decisions about these things? Is this being floated as a trial balloon? Do you have any sense about where they are in this decision-making process? Sure. So the way it was explained to us is that certainly the president has made no decisions. It's more that the president is an avid consumer of news. He reads all of these articles. He watches television. Um, and he's reading about both the expanding Russia probe and also about a president's pardoning authority. And as part of that, he's just sort of become curious and understanding, well, you know, what, what is actually the reach of my authority? as president, um, what could I do? How would it work? How does this go? He, 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 it sort of explained as him doing his 
his diligence in expressing curiosity, not that he's floated uh, specific names. Um, on the specific question of whether the, the, pardon, the, the president can pardon himself, obviously that's an, an arguable, that's like a, a, a classic law school debate topic. Um, yes. Do we know what kind of advice the president has received from his lawyers or what, uh, which way his lawyers are leaning on that question as to whether they believe the president can issue himself a pardon? So you're right. It, it, it is a very sort of confusing, <laughs> a confusing question, and one that it feels like from us just talking to outside legal experts might end up, if, if he were to ever do that, getting kicked to the Supreme Court. And as of now, we just know that it is something that the president's team is discussing. Um, and I don't know that they have necessarily reached a conclusion. Okay. Well, let me ask you about one other um, element of, the, of your reporting tonight, which is just stunning. I'm just going to quote to you what you guys have in your piece tonight. Um, some Republicans in frequent touch with the White House say they viewed the president's decision last night to publicly air his disappointment with Attorney General Jeff Sessions as a warning sign that the Attorney General's days were numbered. Several senior aides were described as stunned when Jeff Sessions announced this morning that he would stay on at the Justice Department. It sounds like what you're, basically what you are reporting there is that the president intended to ask for Jeff Sessions' resignation with his comments last night. So I want to be clear, I don't know that the president intended to ask for his resignation. I think if the president intended to ask for his resignation, he, he would have done that. Mm -hmm. um, but, the, but in also talking to people, the president is incredibly savvy. He knows what he is doing when he talks to the New York Times, lets them, says the things he said about his attorney general and, frankly, other members of the Justice Department, and then says, and you know what, you can put this all on the record. Um, he, he absolutely knows what that means, what sort of message that is sending, and that is why a lot of his senior aides, who, to be clear, some of them didn't even know the president was going to do this interview. Um, it's oh. not like it was a well-planned out strategy. Um, but after seeing this, many were stunned when they saw Sessions today say that he was going to continue on as, as attorney general. Um, is it your sense, and, and this is something that is not touched on in your piece as far as I know, but um, I, I was just talking moments ago before your news came out about the importance of the president um, having this political divorce with his attorney general. It would seem to me that getting rid of attorney general Sessions, replacing him with a new attorney general, um, would be an important step toward firing Robert Mueller if that was the president's intention. Obviously, with attorney general Sessions recused from the Russia investigation, um, he can have nothing to do with what Robert Mueller is doing. If there were a new attorney general in place, there's presumably that would be an attorney general that didn't have a reason to recuse. That attorney general could then fire Robert Mueller. Um, that's just me doing the math in terms of what I understand about how these things are, are put together. Is, is that potential chain of events um, part of this consideration as far as you know or as far as you're able to report in terms of why the president and Sessions are at loggerheads? Well, the, the president and Sessions have been at loggerheads basically since Sessions recused himself with giving no heads up to the president, and the president's instinct is always to fight, fight, fight. Um, and so I think the president was upset with his attorney general just starting from that moment, and things went downhill from there. Uh, the president and a lot of his team see it as sort of an inception point that him, Sessions recusing himself, set the stage for Rod Rosenstein um, to appoint Mueller, and on and on and on. I do have to say, and this is in our story, that the president's legal team, there is an effort to basically try to limit and undercut Mueller's probe, um, and they are they are building the case quite deliberately, publicly and privately, of basically, you know, among other things, trying to cite conflicts of interest um, and tr trying to make the case that Mueller is potentially exceeding the reasonable scope of what he was tasked to do. And those all, if I understand it correctly, although I'm not a lawyer, could be reasons the president could give for starting the process to fire the special counsel. Right, because there's no reason for you to make a, I mean, just speaking theoretically here, there's no reason for you to make a case against what the special counsel is doing because the special counsel operates independently and can't have his probe shaped by people complaining about it from the White House. The reason you'd come up with those undercutting arguments is to justify having set in motion a chain of events that would fire him. Um, right. And a, con yeah. and a conflict of interest is one of the possible reasons that an attorney general can cite right. to remove a special counsel exactly. under DOJ regulations. 
fascinating reporting. Ashley Parker at the Washington Post was bylined on this piece tonight along with Carol Lennig, Rosalind Helderman, uh, and Tom Hamburger. Ashley, thank you for joining us on Zero Notice. <laughs> thank you. For I really having appreciate me. it. Thank you very much. Um, so this is, a, this is a really big deal. Again, this has just re been reported by the Washington Post in the last few minutes, um, as Ashley Parker was just explaining there. Um, the headline says that you know, Trump's lawyers are looking for ways to undercut the Mueller probe. There's no way to undercut it in terms of the way these things work procedurally. If you come... Uh, if you're coming up with reasons to discredit it, those are reasons that you're coming up with to explain after the fact why you have fired him, why you have put somebody in place who could fire him. Um, and the president apparently asking about his power to pardon himself, his family members, and others. Sometimes you get so far away from American historical precedent on these things that the actual historical precedent for these things is that the opposite of this once happened. <laughs> I'll explain what that means with presidential historian Michael Beschloss when we come back. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.